A pump jack is a widely recognized piece of surface equipment used in an artificial lift system to pump crude oil from underground reservoirs. In this video, we'll explain why it's used and the components that make it work. Producers use pump jacks as part of a method of artificial lift called rod lift. You'll also hear this called sucker rod lift or beam pump systems. Of all the forms of artificial lift, rod lift is the most common. If it wasn't already the first form of artificial lift installed, rod lift is usually the last system used on a well before production is stopped. A rod lift setup can operate at low reservoir pressures and continue to produce oil for many years with little operating costs and low maintenance. Because it can operate at low reservoir pressures, sucker rod pumps are used in most stripper wells. A stripper well is an oil well near the end of its economical production time typically making less than 10 barrels of oil per day. Most surface units are beam pumps, which include a prime mover and gear reducer. The generic name of sucker rod lift refers to all types of reciprocating rod lift methods, including the lesser used hydraulically actuated units or tall tower systems. This is why you'll hear the term rod lift, beam pump, sucker rod, and pump jack all used to mean generally the same form of artificial lift. A common rod lift system can be simplified to three broad components. The surface pumping unit, the rod string, and the downhole pumping unit. Let's go over each of these components. A rod lift system is powered by an electric or combustion engine called a prime mover. It delivers high speed, low torque power to the gear reducer. The gear reducer, also called a gearbox, converts that energy into high torque output for the pump jack. This high torque output is required for the pumping unit to move the counterweights and the rod string as well as the column of oil from thousands of feet underground to the surface. The pump jack or pumping unit uses the rotating motion of the prime mover and reciprocates a vertical motion on the rod strings which are connected to a downhole pump. The pump jack is the main visible element that has acquired many creative names over the years like the nodding donkey, rocking horse, dinosaur, and the thirsty bird. The stuffing box forms a tight seal with the polished rod and allows it to move up and down without leaking oil out. It diverts the produced fluid out of the pumping tee and into the flow line. The polished rod is the topmost rod in a rod string. The polished rod is connected to a long string of sucker rods or rod strings, which connect the surface unit to a downhole pump. Each time the rods and pump are stroked, a volume of produced fluid is lifted to the surface. The downhole pump is the component that moves the fluid up from the tubing. It consists of a pump chamber, a plunger with a traveling valve, and a standing valve. As the plunger travels down the pump chamber, the traveling valve is open while the standing valve is closed, allowing fluid to flow above the plunger. When the plunger is traveling back up the pump chamber, the standing valve opens and the traveling valve is closed, drawing in more fluid from the reservoir. The pump assembly acts like check valves. It allows the fluid to flow up through the ball checks, but not back into the reservoir. Pumping units can also be designed with multiple plungers. Some applications where a double plunger could be used include production with high viscosity oil or low gas to oil ratios. One challenge with pump jacks is the volume limitations. If you are operating with increased volumes, you may have to change out the pump to a larger size to accommodate the changing conditions, which require downtime for a workover rig to pull the rods and the pump from the well. If the well is producing enough oil, the pumping unit may operate 24-7, but as production declines, the operator may slow down the speed of the unit or operate it intermittently. If the pump is being operated too quickly, gas may be produced through the same perforations as the oil. If the gas enters the pump, it leads to insufficient pressure building up in the pump. Under these conditions, the pump cannot open the standing or traveling valves due to the compression of the gas. With little or nothing brought to the surface, this issue is known as gas interference. 
This can become gas lock where neither valve in the pump opens during the stroke cycle. Despite these challenges, rod lift remains the most economical artificial lift system used for aging wells. To learn more about other artificial lift methods, check out our videos and podcasts on gas lift, plunger lifts, and ESPs.